Good morning, traders. It's Friday, January the 17th. I slept in a little this morning, so I'm behind the ball. Going to uh, just make a real quick video because not a whole lot has changed. The grand change, the grand scheme of things, we keep riding up the five-day moving average. Eventually, have a pullback correction through it towards the 20-day, back above it, pull back to the 20-day. We're back above it, extending. Our pink uh, cycle analysis line, when it is up above in this upper zone here, this is the power zone. It means we've got lots of energy. The market is going. When we start to see these, uh, this light green, it's usually some type of short-term pullback. Uh, the yellow is more of a significant pullback. When they get down into these lower zones, it's usually a point where the market's starting to get oversold. We can look for some type of dip in the market uh, and pullback, or sorry, and then a rally. Overall, we are back into this kind of really overbought territory. All the cycles are in the upper zone. There's lots of power. Uh, this could continue to keep trucking for a while. But overall, uh, when they're all clustering in the top, you do have to be aware we could get some pretty sharp pullbacks uh, at any point. So right now we're just following the trend, continuing to let the market do its thing. Stocks are up, uh, NASDAQ up half a percent, SP 500 up a, th a third of a percent. So we just keep moving higher and higher. Uh, if we were to look at the, uh, let's just jump over to the weekly chart real quick. Let's just zoom out and take a look here. I think it was actually the monthly chart. I was looking at a chart last night that when you start to see some of this big expansion uh, in price, you start to start to get concerned that the market is uh, getting close to a topping formation. So more or less, when you start to see big bars, big price swings on the monthly chart. Um, you notice, if you notice most of the time, we see these very small bars, these monthly bars climbing up, climbing up, and then they start to get bigger and bigger, and then they start to have much larger ranges. Now this, this chart goes back all the way to 2000. Things are kind of condensed, but you get the gist. You got lots of small little bars, you got some corrections along the way. Uh, bars start to get a little bigger. That's when you start to get concerned, but then you get back into small bars. Then you get back into some big bars where the market is on the verge of it's either a big consolidation or it's a topping phase. And then we're back into small bars and then you get back into big bars. And now we're really just in this kind of this really expansion move here where prices is, is really starting to take off. And the type of price action that we're seeing here where the market is, is ripping to the upside um, is usually a sign that we're getting pretty darn close. Things are starting to go parabolic, meaning everyone's piling in. Every pause or pullback is just getting bought back up. And the fact that we're just seeing this expansion and it's starting to go parabolic, we're getting into that, I think, euphoric stage where everybody's just buying. Uh, it doesn't matter what's going on. It's just they're buying, 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 buying. Price is going straight up. We got big volatility. This is a, seen as a big consolidation, but uh, overall, we're starting to go up way faster than the market can handle. And this type of price action typically leads to a type of correction, a sharp correction. So let's take a quick look. This is the chart of gold. This is the monthly chart, big picture stuff. And this is obviously the top in 2011. We've been in this multi-year bear market and then this basing formation. And finally, we're breaking out of all these previous pivot highs. We've had a nice strong breakout, a nice bull flag holding above this key line over here. And, and then we're, we're pushing up. We're on a monthly basis. We're, we're set to close at the highest in many years. Uh, still very bullish chart uh, looking long term. Obviously, this was a basing st uh, stage one accumulation, a basing stage. It has broken out. And gold is seen as the global uh, safe haven. So we're seeing all countries pile into uh, gold. There's a lot of currency things going on. So people are moving money, their currencies, converting it to gold. They've been buying gold. And that's why gold is leading the way. Now, if we take a look over at silver, silver is still in this basing formation. It's still making lower lower or lower highs. It's more or less holding these lows. It's, you could argue this could be a really dragged out double bottom. It's still holding under these levels, but it is primed and ready uh, for a big expansion move. And I talked about this in a recent article saying the the setup we've got going on here and the type of energy that I feel is built up in silver is very similar to what we saw in 2010, where uh, suddenly gold's already been moving up and rallying gold miners, and then suddenly silver just goes boom and just explodes to the upside. The silver gold gold silver ratio is out of whack. It's everything is pointing to silver should play catch up in a big way. So silver is still sleeping and in, in, in this base. And if we take a look at gold miners, GDXJ, same type of thing. We are still down in this base. If we were to throw um, a horizontal line on here, we still have a really significant pivot high to break here. We got this high right over here. 
And uh, more or less, the market is still trying to work itself higher. It's still in this basing stage. And of course, miners uh, and silver aren't quite seen as the same safe havens. They're more of the speculative play. So global players uh, in different countries don't have as easy access or want to access these as much. They're going for a safe haven, not a speculative type of safe haven that's got leverage. So that's why they're underperforming, I think. And I think there will be a time here where they start to break out and we could see a huge move in these. But again, gold, our silver and miners are still, they're not even in a bull market yet. They've had the first initial run up. This here, I talked about it back in 2016, 2017, that Usually, once you see a, a run of 80 or 100 percent or more in the gold miners and 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 uh, silver type of thing, you have this strong move. It's usually kind of the warm up phase, the get ready rally, but it can still take a long time for it to 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 break out of there. It's usually the sign where huge money is piled in, has been positioned, and really is, they're just letting the the market do its thing. So I think there's a lot of potential for metals and miners, to, the, uh, silver and miners. Once they break into a bull market, um, overall, they haven't yet. Okay, so back to the daily chart. Take a look at, uh, um, this is bonds, and we've got this, more or less this falling trend line, depending where you want to connect these trend lines here, um, from these highs down through these highs. Overall, bonds are trying to break out through this market. You could argue it goes through and connects these highs. Overall, it is holding its ground. It is Bonds are down today. They're down about... Uh, six tenths of a percent so they're unwinding as money is uh flowing into equities but overall we've seen our trend chart everything is shifting to the upside it shows uh that money is moving uh, in general to the safe the risk off assets the safe havens bonds and metals and we're looking for uh this to continue to, to potentially flatline or start to move higher going forward at any point here in the stock market is on the verge of a big pullback because what goes straight up usually comes straight back down even bonds have done the same thing look at this huge straight up move in bonds and of course what goes straight up usually comes more or less straight back down for at least half of the move if not uh, even more of it uh, so overall that's kind of what's happening and this is a nice big formation that if this slowly just works itself out and starts to break out we could see a nice sustainable move and um, <clears throat> if the stock market does have a sharp collapse, we're going to get another one of these big pops. And that's why we are positioned in here, because they're primed and ready for uh, bonds are showing st uh, strength, even though stocks are moving up. And that's a good sign. It means bonds should be more or less done uh, to the downside. And there's not much more uh, downside risk uh, versus upside. Now, taking a look over at energies, natural gas dropping today it was down two and a half percent a couple minutes ago. It uh, having this flush down, hit the 20 day, reverse back down. We've talked about this. We're looking at this uh, as a potential support level here. You can see it dipped through this this line this morning. I can zoom in a little bit here. Dipped through it, recovered. It's holding at this level. More or less, it's, it's the $2 level. Uh, very significant, I think, for short term oversold territory. And uh, we've got a little bit of... Uh, money left in our portfolio our short-term trading we might stick our toe into natural gas try and catch a rebound back up uh, for a quick move and i do feel as though we're this could be one of the final kind of washout uh, lows down here now overall uh, cycles for really active things like natural gas i usually just look at short-term clusters usually get into these short-term clusters meaning all the cycles get into the oversold territory and then you usually see some type of knee-jerk reaction pop out of those zones we had the same thing over here they're all down in this lower reversal zone and then the market had a pop and now we're back down into that area and we're into a support zone and the two dollar level so i think there's very limited downside i think a lot of it's been flushed out here so we might stick our toe in the water for more or less a bottom picking play which does carry a lot more risk natural gas is a fast mover which adds a little more risk but overall, I think there's a lot more upside potential for natural gas going forward. I think we could see a very sharp reaction back to the 20-day. And then I think we could get into one of these type of rallies here. We caught both of these last time and the last two times. So we're looking for something similar eventually as well that I think could bring us back up into this $3 mark. Taking a look over at crude. <clears throat> crude in a in a pretty high momentum move to the downside it is getting close to this green or this blue support level we talked about it last couple of days it's oversold it's really hard to try and short something that has dropped you know 15 20 percent 
um, in in price or, or uh, yeah, I think from the high down to the low, it's 12 or 15 percent somewhere in here. It's hard to short something to expect it to continue to go further. It is getting that oversold bounce, and we're going to see what kind of pattern forms. Maybe this is going to form a bearish formation for a week or so. Maybe gives us an opportunity for the second leg down, and that would give us a nice uh, measured move, a Fibonacci move somewhere like this, where you've got the high, you've got this low, and then say it rallies up to this 20-day, it gives us our downside target. Uh, in price, meaning we could see price uh, collapse, have some type of bear flag, and then come back down to the 618. If it hiccups there, we usually see it hit the 100% measured move. And this 618 will fall in line with these previous levels here, which acts as previous support levels, and then it's through some chop, and then it's through a whole bunch of chop back here through the highs and the lows. And so that's where the average volume is going to be, where people are um, going to want to get out of their positions and uh, lock in gains or get out of the roller coaster ride of being on the wrong side and they're back to break even. And that's usually why you see a hiccup at these high volume levels as people rebalance and getting, it, getting out of positions for either a profit or to get out at break even. Anyways, that's it for this morning and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.